Have you ever wondered what battle was so pivotal that it changed the course of World War II? A conflict so intense it altered the trajectory of history? That battle is none other than the Battle of Stalingrad. Now let's delve into the story of the Battle of Stalingrad. Before we dive into the battle itself, we must understand the events leading up to it. The Battle of Stalingrad didn't just happen out of the blue. The strategic importance of Stalingrad was not lost on either side. The city, named after Joseph Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union, was a symbol of Soviet resistance and resilience. It was a major industrial hub producing tanks, mortars and other essential war materials. But it was also a valuable transportation node where the Volga River, a significant trade route, could be controlled. Hitler knew that capturing Stalingrad would be a severe blow to Soviet morale and their ability to continue the war. In the spring of 1942, Hitler and his generals began planning for a major offensive in the east. Codenamed Operation Blue, the strategy was to seize the oil fields of the Caucasus and cut off the Volga River, crippling the Soviet Union's ability to supply its war effort. Stalingrad was a key objective in this plan and its capture would also secure the German army's flanks as they pushed southwards. But why did Hitler focus on Stalingrad? The answer lies in a blend of strategic and symbolic reasons. Strategically, Hitler hoped to cut off the Soviets' access to the Volga River and its vital transportation and supply routes. Symbolically, the city bore the name of his nemesis, Joseph Stalin. By taking Stalingrad, Hitler believed he could demoralize the Soviet leadership and people, weakening their resolve to fight. The German high command, however, was not entirely on board with this plan. Some of Hitler's top generals, including Heinz Guderian, argued that the German forces were overextended and that they should focus on the original objective of the Caucasus oil fields. But Hitler, ever the gambler, decided to split his forces and go for both objectives. This decision, fueled by hubris and a misunderstanding of Soviet capabilities, would set the stage for one of the bloodiest battles of World War II. With these stakes, the stage was set for one of the most brutal battles in history. In the summer of 1942, the German Sixth Army launched their offensive, this was not just a military campaign, it was a statement. A statement that the German forces were not only capable, but also determined to capture the Soviet city of Stalingrad. The city bore the name of the Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, making it a symbolic prize for Adolf Hitler. The German forces, under the command of General Friedrich Paulus, initiated what seemed like an unstoppable march. Their tanks advanced, their soldiers marched and their bombers took to the sky, leaving destruction in their wake. The Red Army, despite their valor, found themselves initially outmatched and outmaneuvered. The German Sixth Army was a formidable foe, well-equipped and battle-hardened. By late August the German forces had managed to capture most of Stalingrad. The city was in ruins, its buildings reduced to rubble, its streets scarred by the scars of battle. But amid the ruins, the will of the Soviet defenders remained unbroken. They held on, fighting for every inch, every building, every street. Their resistance was fierce, their determination unwavering. Yet, for all their initial success, the German forces soon found themselves in a precarious situation. Stalingrad was a sprawling city, and controlling it proved to be a Herculean task. The Soviet forces though pushed back, were far from defeated. They regrouped, they reinforced, and they prepared to fight back. The German forces meanwhile found themselves stretched thin, their supply lines were extended, their resources depleted, and their men exhausted. The Battle of Stalingrad was proving to be a grinding war of attrition, a war that the German forces were ill-prepared for. As the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, the German Sixth Army found themselves embroiled in a brutal urban warfare, a far cry from the blitzkrieg tactics they were accustomed to. But as the Germans would soon learn, capturing Stalingrad was one thing, holding it was another. Facing near total defeat, the Soviets launched a desperate counter-offensive. In the harshest winter conditions, the Red Army began a daring and unexpected strategy. This wasn't just about reclaiming lost territory, it was about trapping the enemy and turning the tide of the war. The Soviets' plan was audacious, it was called Operation Uranus, and it was a masterstroke of military strategy. It aimed to exploit the German Army's weak flanks, which were defended by the poorly equipped, under-trained Axis satellite troops. The Soviet forces planned to pierce through these flanks, then meet at a point behind German lines, thereby encircling the enemy. This strategy of encirclement is a classic maneuver in warfare, but the scale at which it was implemented at Stalingrad was unprecedented. 
the Soviets intended to trap the entire German Sixth Army, one of the most formidable fighting forces of the time, in a Kessel or pocket. Picture this, a cauldron with the Germans at the center and the Red Army holding the lid. The Germans would be cut off from supplies, reinforcements, and any hope of retreat. They would be forced to fight a war of attrition in the bitter Russian winter, a situation for which they were ill-prepared. The Soviets began their counteroffensive on November 19, 1942. Armored spearheads of the Red Army smashed through the weak Romanian forces guarding the German flanks. Within four days the pincers of the Soviet forces met at Kalak west of Stalingrad, sealing hundreds of thousands of German and Axis soldiers in the pocket. The Germans were taken by surprise. They were now fighting on two fronts against an enemy that was no longer retreating but advancing. The encirclement was complete. The 6th Army was trapped with dwindling supplies and no possibility of a breakout. The hunters had become the hunted. This marked a turning point, as the Germans were now on the defensive. The Battle of Stalingrad was far from over but the momentum had shifted. The Red Army had shown that it could not only resist the German war machine but strike back with devastating effect. Trapped and isolated, the German 6th Army faced a brutal siege. Caught in the heart of the city they'd hoped to capture, the German forces found themselves in a relentless and unforgiving battle for survival. The Battle of Stalingrad was not just a test of military might but also a clash of wills, a grim dance between two giants locked in mortal combat. Imagine if you will the bitter cold of the Russian winter, the temperatures plummeting to minus 30, minus 40 degrees Celsius. The snow and ice, an unrelenting enemy in their own right, blanketing the ruined cityscape. And amidst this frozen wasteland, the German 6th Army, cut off from their supply lines, desperately trying to hold their ground. The cold was not the only adversary they faced. A lack of supplies further compounded their predicament. Food was scarce, ammunition dwindling. The soldiers were ill-equipped for the harsh winter conditions, their summer uniforms offering little protection against the biting cold. Fuel for their vehicles ran low, their once mighty panzer divisions reduced to mere shells of their former glory. Yet the harshest blow came not from the cold or the hunger, but from the relentless Soviet attacks. The Red Army, like a wolf pack closing in on its prey, launched attack after attack on the encircled German forces. Day and night, the sound of artillery fire echoed through the city, a grim reminder of the siege that held them captive. Hunger gnawed at their bellies, frostbite claimed their fingers and toes, but the German soldiers stood their ground, they held out, hoping against hope for a relief force. They clung to the belief that their comrades would break through the Soviet lines and come to their rescue. But the relief force they so desperately hoped for, the help they so desperately needed, would never come. The German high command had gambled and lost. The 6th Army was left to bear the brunt of their failed strategy, left to face the brutal siege in the ruins of a city that would forever bear the scars of their struggle. Despite these conditions the Germans held out hoping for a relief force that would never come. By February 1943, the German situation was untenable. The once formidable German 6th Army, once the pride of the Wehrmacht, was now trapped in the ruins of Stalingrad, encircled by a vengeful Red Army. The winter months had been harsh, and the German soldiers were ill-prepared for the brutal Russian cold. Food was scarce, morale was low, and defeat seemed inevitable. As the final Soviet offensive began, the Red Army, energized by the prospect of victory, stormed the city with a ferocity unseen before. The German forces, weakened by months of grueling warfare and the unforgiving winter, could do little to resist the Soviet onslaught. The city that had once been a symbol of German invincibility was now a symbol of their impending defeat. The commander of the German 6th Army, Field Marshal Friedrich Paulus, was faced with a grim decision. He could either fight to the last man, as per Hitler's orders, or he could surrender and save what was left of his men. After much deliberation, he chose the latter. On the second day of February, Paulus surrendered his forces to the Soviets, marking the end of the Battle of Stalingrad. The surrender was a devastating blow to the German war effort. Over 90,000 German soldiers were taken prisoner, many of whom would never return home. The once mighty German 6th Army was no more. The Soviets on the other hand, had achieved a decisive victory. They had not only liberated Stalingrad, but had also dealt a significant blow to the German forces, a blow from which they would never fully recover. 
The Battle of Stalingrad was a brutal and bloody affair, a testament to the horrors of war. But it was also a turning point, a moment where the tide of the war shifted in favor of the Allies. The German war machine, once thought invincible, had been stopped in its tracks, and the Soviets were now on the offensive. With this victory, the Soviets had not only turned the tide on the Eastern Front, but they had also changed the course of the war. The Battle of Stalingrad was over, but its impact would echo throughout the rest of World War II, shaping the outcome of this global conflict. The Battle of Stalingrad was over, but its impact was far from finished. In the aftermath of the battle, the human cost was staggering. On the Soviet side, nearly a million men had been killed, wounded or captured, a testament to the desperate struggle their soldiers endured. The German losses were equally devastating with more than 400,000 soldiers killed or wounded and another 91,000 captured, many of whom would never return home. These were not just numbers on a page but lives forever altered, families forever scarred. The impact on German morale was profound. The myth of invincibility that had surrounded the German army was shattered. Soldiers and civilians alike began to question whether victory was still possible. For the first time the German high command had to confront the reality of defeat. The Battle of Stalingrad was a bitter pill to swallow, a blow to the German psyche from which it would never fully recover. But the aftermath of Stalingrad was about more than just casualties and crushed morale. It marked a turning point in the war. The tide had turned in favor of the Allies. The once mighty German army was now on the defensive, its aura of invincibility shattered. The Red Army, galvanized by its victory, began to push westward with renewed vigor. Stalingrad had shown the world that the Axis powers could be defeated. The legacy of Stalingrad goes beyond the battlefield. It serves as a stark reminder of the brutality and devastation of war, of the human capacity for endurance and sacrifice. It is a testament to the high human cost of war, a price paid in blood and tears by those who had no choice but to fight. The Battle of Stalingrad remains a testament to the high human cost of war and a turning point in one of history's most brutal conflicts. So what have we learned about the Battle of Stalingrad? It's a dense and heavy topic, but to fully understand the magnitude of this battle we must journey back to the pivotal moments that shaped its outcome. The Battle of Stalingrad, a key turning point in World War II, was a brutal clash between Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union that lasted from late summer of 1942 until early February of 1943. Initially, the German offensive seemed unstoppable. Their strategic bombing campaign, Operation Barbarossa, was designed to cripple the Soviet Union's industrial capabilities and morale. However, the city of Stalingrad, with its symbolic significance as a namesake of Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, refused to buckle under the pressure. This led us to the Soviet counteroffensive, a powerful retaliation that demonstrated the resilience of the Red Army. With winter on their side, they launched Operation Uranus, encircling the German 6th Army. The tables started to turn, and the Soviets began to reclaim their besieged city. The siege, a stage of the battle that lasted for over two months, was a testament to the human spirit's will to survive against all odds. Despite the harsh winter, dwindling supplies and constant bombardment, the Red Army and the civilians of Stalingrad held on, turning every inch of the city into a battleground. And then, there was the end game. The German 6th Army, once a formidable force, was now trapped and gradually worn down. In February 1943, Field Marshal Friedrich Paulus surrendered marking the first time a German field marshal had ever capitulated in battle. The Battle of Stalingrad finally came to an end. In the aftermath, the human cost of the battle was staggering. Approximately 2 million soldiers and civilians lost their lives in this brutal confrontation. The city of Stalingrad was left in ruins, but the Soviet victory had far-reaching implications. It marked a turning point on the Eastern Front, shifting the momentum of the war in favor of the Allies. The legacy of the Battle of Stalingrad remains etched in our collective memory. It serves as a stark reminder of the devastating power of war, the resilience of the human spirit, and the high price of victory. In the end, it was a battle that changed the course of history, a brutal reminder of the true cost of war.